that means I can put one up at the lock on the right? What we put up on the board and the clocks are very much unofficial. My knowledge of Alexei Novikov uh, started, uh, I think, three years ago, and he came to compete for a Giants Live qualifier event that we ran in Belfast, Northern Ireland. He came pretty much as an unknown, and I had some great names out of the UK, some good names out of Ireland, all competing, and uh, along came Novikov. As soon as he started, I realised there was something a bit special about this kid. Everyone here in this room is an integral part of what's going on in a culmination of 40 years of strongman. This is the best of the best. The guys have put this together where it's at the highest level that it's ever been and it's just gonna go out beyond and you guys are part of it. This is really an incredible event. I'm so happy to be part of it. This is the future of Strongman right here, this room right now, and this team, you're all part of it. What a wonderful movement in World's Strongest Man. Thanks. pressure on other guys because everybody who's anybody knows he's good in the world of strongman and I don't think people just realize how good he is. Ladies and gentlemen our next athlete is 23 years of age he stands six feet tall and tips the scales at 135 representing Ukraine Alexei Malvikov Ladies and gentlemen, Bruning, Novikov, Ferris, Singleton, Shiblikov, Oberst, Vivi, Hollands, Bishop, Stoltman, Stoltman, Felix, and Kieliszkowski. Manchester, welcome to the Giants Live World's Strongest Man Tour Finals. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the deadlift really starts in the back, the backstage, obviously for the warm-ups. The guys are coming in to do a lift that is 360, or very, very close to that um, for repetition, so they need to prepare their bodies to come out. They can't just go in and lift that cold. So the warm-up area can be very, very intense. We'll, we'll have a team of bar loaders there, um, and everybody is there, either with or without the coaches, suited, strapped, and are picking their lifts to prepare their bodies for the event and it can be in my experience um, it, it can be very very intense because every athlete although they say very little is watching exactly what the other ones are doing how easy they're making those lifts look or not um, what they're doing with the straps um, how they're fitting the suit what suits are they wearing where they're putting the feet you know every little aspect of what they're doing and it can be a real mind game as well because if somebody even comes on with something as crazy as something as a different coloured set of straps or a different coloured chalk or something crazy like that it can what's he doing what's what, do i need that and for the for the less prepared athlete that really can be uh, uh, a game changer you know because it just upsets the the mind frame The most reps done was seven, and we had three athletes manage seven repetitions. Adam Bishop, Mark Felix, and Novikov. To get more than that in the time allowance, was it possible? Yeah, I think it actually was. Um, I think another rep could have been done. Most of the guys got to the point where the, the, the bar just wouldn't come up again. You know, they, they, they reached their limit. The only person that's done eight in it is Martin Zlissis on that particular piece of equipment. But seven reps is, is, is phenomenal with you know 360 kilos on a bar like that. Absolutely. For Novikov, uh, the deadlift went really well. I mean, I, I was a little bit surprised. Um, there was mention that his suit was um, a little bit looser fitting than some of the other guys. That might have been a tactical measure because sometimes a suit that's too tight can restrain the breathing, compact the chest. 
I'm not sure what his take was on that, but obviously he must have practiced in that suit and felt that was the best one for him to perform in. Um, but he, uh, he was phenomenal on the deadlift, which surprised me because the deadlift was one of the things I thought was a chink in his armor. Um, but his reps were solid, his lockout was good, and uh, he did what he had to do. Mark Felix, everybody loves you, man. Definitely. I know I'm dead, so, you know, I don't care what they say. It's up to talk. So, actually, we are the strongest man to a point from right here in Manchester last year. He's back. He's hungry. And he wants to stamp his authority on this event. Traditionally, not an athlete that loves the deadlift. If he can get big points here, his confidence will go through the roof, though. On the whistle! One thing I anticipated Novikov to do very well in was the dumbbell. I've seen him do that event before and he was the most perfect dumbbell presser for repetitions I think I've ever witnessed. Uh, I, 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 it just looked like somebody had got him on a video loop doing rep after rep after rep. They were the same speed, the same technique, his feet didn't turn or move, it was superb. Only one chair is this man. When he stood before me as his referee, as me as his referee, and completely fluffed the first rep, I was really surprised because for him, I knew he was going to have to get a good number in with no mistakes, with the likes of Kilikovsky and people like that who really can bivy, who really can press. He still, remarkably, managed to hammer out eight reps even with a, a, a big mistake at the start. Uh, which left him in, in, in good shape because uh, he was only beaten by Kilikovsky, so his second place in, in, the, in the dumbbell was, was really, really good. Ian Bibby and Evan Singleton right behind him with seven repetitions. Very, very tight, but uh, his, pre his reps were good, he was very solid, and once he corrected himself, his speed was phenomenal again. Bishop's door, the cock is really smooth. Where's he got you? Oh, 
have some uh, mistakes. So I hope do more better results in the uh, car walk. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for this awesome newcomer, Alexei Novikov. After the first two events, I think Novikov was starting to be noticed um, by the crowd mostly because I don't think many of the Giants Live crowd will have seen much of him before. He's very much a newcomer on the bigger stage. Um, some of the guys that are on the other circuits of Strongman have seen him before and they know how very, very good he is. Um, Novikov, actually before um, the dumbbell, wanted to try the dumbbell, even though there'd been one backstage, he had to put the dumbbell on his shoulder to get the feel of it on that. I, I think that was a nervous thing. I think that was just to secure in his mind's eye that he could manhandle that thing into the position he needed to have it to press. Um, and I allowed him to do that because there was, there was time in the film set just to help calm his nerves a little bit. Um, but after the dumbbell, everybody saw he had the potential to at least equal Kilikovsky without that mistake. And he was going to be a contender for the rest of the show because he had also done very, very well in the deadlift, remember, which Kilikovsky hadn't. The car walk was event three, and the car walk, there is a big element of, maybe not luck, but fortune in that. Um, just how you pick it up, how you take those first few steps. Um, the, the, the athletes will tell you when they're going with that, the, the, the skill is to move quickly and smoothly, not too jerky, um, because a jerk, a lock joint, something like that in the body, it tips you the front tires hit the floor and the thing goes down. If the, the, if the device hits the floor, the equipment hits the, the floor, it really is game over because it's going to take you two, three seconds to pick back up and get moving again. Well, two point four six seconds. That's the first time I've ever used that car. So then, 20 meters, 11.05 is Lawrence Charley's world record. There is Lawrence Charley over there. Give us a wee wave, Rosa. Congratulations. Yeah, Novakov and Kilikovsky, head to head, set off, almost neck and neck. It was looking like it was going to be a phenomenally close race. Then Kilikovsky started to leap in front. I think Novikov overcooked it, trying to press the, 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 the go faster button and dropped the, the equipment. So he picked up, came to the end, and I think he dropped again before the end of the line. But Kilikovsky, I had time because Novikov dropped as, as, as Novikov's referee to see where Kilikovsky was coming. And I glanced down and I knew it was very, very close to in and around the 10 second mark when he crossed the line. Novikov was, uh, I think, 16 and a half seconds. Representing Who's first? Alexi. Second is Ikeos. Third is Evan. 
Fifth. Hey guys, Lawrence Chatelier here. We're going to have a quick rundown of how Alexei Novikov is getting on today. So far, three events in. He's in first place with two events to go. There's been a lot of talk about this guy all year. He had an amazing performance at the Arnolds. Went to World Strongest Man, did really well there. Uh, he's won a number of international shows as well. And at 23 years old, he's just like one of the youngest up and coming athletes out there. And someone that's really going to push the, you know, to, to win the major titles. So, so far, first event, deadlift for reps. Seven reps with Adam Bishop and Mark Felix, both well-established deadlifters. And for him to kind of get joint with them at age of 23 on the deadlift, that's pretty immense, you know, to have that kind of back power. It's not even a big guy. He's one of the, the lighter guys in the competition. So, tremendous start for him. Second event I know was his favorite event, the dumbbell. He, that is his event, he, he really, really loves it. I think because Kilius Goski did a good time, it just made him rush a little bit. Made a little mistake with that first rep and didn't get his first rep. After that, he settled himself down and I think he ended up getting seven reps. But I think he could have easily equaled Kilius Goski in that if he didn't make that silly mistake. But, you know, still second place or joint second place on the second event. Uh, so he had a joint first, joint second, two events in. Just done the car walk. He looked really keen to impress. You could tell that he wanted to perform and, and really establish a, a big league going into kind of the halfway point of the competition. He was up against Kilius Goski, who put in a like a, just a blistering run. I had the world record at 11.05. was hoping that I could hold on to it, but he blew it out the water with a 10 second flat. And you know, some people have come up to me and said, are you disappointed? Sure, it, you know, it's disappointing not to have the record, but that guy put an amazing performance in. It was just awesome to see. And I'd like to come back, you know, I've always said I believe I could crack 11, but 10 is something else. That was fast. So my hat goes off to him. I think being up against Kilius Koski, it made Novikov rush a little bit. You could see the car getting out of balance and he, he, he just stumbled a, a few times. He moved quick, but he stumbled and went down. And if you go down, it costs you a lot of points. So. That's made the competition pretty close halfway through. I think he's got one point lead over Kilius Koski now with the Hercules hold and the Atlas stones to come. I know Kilius Koski is awesome at stones. He's going to be, you know, fighting hard. I think it's really going to come down to who wins out of those two on the grip event. I don't think either of them will win the event. I think Mark Felix is just out of the water on that type of event. And there's some other good um, guys with strong grips in this, but it's going to be a big battle just between those two athletes now to really see who wins the show. Uh, I picked Kilius Koski from the start. It's going to be hard for him. Novikov is a determined young man. He's going to push hard. This next event is what it's all about, I think, to decide the winner. And he has been an untouchable force in this area. He wants to see it. We've seen classic efforts tonight already. We are getting into the winning as well as Felix all the minute and still looks strong. Uh, the, the, the fourth event was, was the Hercules Hold, and I, I, for Novikov, thought this would be a pretty decent event, actually. Um, my reasoning being that, although he didn't look like he had the biggest hands, um, he's very light and athletic compared to some of, the, some of the other guys, which often relates into good grip. Not always, but, but I just thought with the way this guy's performed and what he was able to do um, with lifting and carrying things that I'd seen in the past, um, I, I thought this would be a, a, a decent event for him. Um, and granted, in any other show where we've had the Hercules hold, he did 55, just over 55 and a half seconds. That would have been very good. But in the field we had, um, it was good, but not, uh, not good enough. With obviously Mark Felix smashing the world record out of the water again. Um, Evan Singleton did a great time. And Bibby did a great time. Um, Robert Oberst also did a fantastic time 
Um, and as did Kevin Ferris, all beating um, not only uh, Novikov, but Kielikovsky. Um, sorry, Ben Brunning was in there as well. He, beat, he beat, the, beat the times as well. So this is where the scoreboard really started to make a big change. Um, because those two guys um, didn't do as well as I would have anticipated them doing in the Hercules Hall. First, Alexei Novikov and Iron Bibby. Kieliszkowski, a point and a half behind him third. I did notice that Novikov spent throughout the competition, not just towards the last event, most of his time uh, arena side. So he was watching everything that was going on. Um, he was, he was uh, talking quite a lot to uh, Shibliakov, um, who was in and out of the competition with a pulled hamstring. He was, he'd kind of written himself off with the, with the deadlift at the start, but had gone on to do bits and pieces, but was no longer in contention to, uh, to do anything within the show. He, he knew what he had to do in the stones. Um, the pressure was on for him to perform because going into the stones, not only um, had the scoreboard changed completely, he was sitting in first place, joint first place with Iron Bibby. On paper, that's a great place to be because Iron Bibby historically wouldn't be the greatest stone lifter. Whereas Novikov, I can't remember seeing him lift stones before, but he look, would look to me as a kind of guy that would be pretty damn good at it. Um, obviously with the likes of uh, Kielikowski, Stoltman, running, these guys that were sticking in the, Mark Felix as well, putting in the performances of their, life, of their lives last night, um, the pressure was on. When Alexei started his stone run, he picked up the first stone so quickly. I was at the other side of the wall, but I remember seeing it. I thought it was going to go right over his shoulder, but some, by some miracle, he managed to catch it, pull it back, fumble it, and press it up and get it onto the first level of the platform. Um, it was quite remarkable what he did for the mistake that he made, but it cost him time. And then he was throwing the other stones up, trying to catch up with himself so quickly, they were almost bouncing over into the other side. Uh, of the platform, so he had to correct those and make sure they landed in the hole, the receptacle in the top of the, the, the stone wall. Um, and his time um, was really hampered, uh, really hampered by that first mistake because you know, five stones 120 to 200, anybody that's doing those sub 30 seconds is phenomenal, you know. Uh, but the best in the world are doing it in around the 20 second mark. So he did it in 29, just over 29 seconds, 29.3 seconds. Matthias, second place right now. Still to go. Maybe making his way to the arena now. Novikov is already in here on the opposite side. A little bit of an edge. We're going to give these guys an intro for the TV. Firstly, raise it up for Alexei Novikov.
There's the whistle. It's in the history books. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be about the scores and who finished where. But I'll tell you what, there's drama left in this evening. Yeah. Hey, a long night. A very, very big night. I think Novikov is capable, was capable of winning that show, without a doubt. I think the pressure was on all of those guys because they was, there was no comfort zone for any of them in any event. They had to be flat out because where you may have let somebody else come close to you, somebody else was going to beat you if you were going to um, take your foot off the pedal. So they had to go flat out at absolutely every single event. Representing you. He doesn't have many weaknesses and the weaknesses he perhaps has he makes up for in some events that he's unstoppable at. Practice some of the events that he made mistakes on. Perhaps taking the time like some of the athletes do to train on the equipment for the competition before the competition. If he learns to control and manage the, the, the event stage nerves, I think he would be another huge potential for a podium finisher at World's Strongest Man.